for audio. The Slut Love Line may contain sexually oriented content. Sexually oriented content. Mm, listener discretion is advised. Love Line with Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. Hey, everybody. It's the Love Line. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1 800 L O V E 191. Dr. Drew, board certified physician, diction measures, blah, 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 blah. blah, blah. reputation of being sort of a rap star. Who are you? He came up to me and I said, I saw somebody look just like you rapping. I think he's talking about the puppet. But then maybe he was talking about my Missy Elliott. Yeah, but how could he see you I, I know. I know. I'm just saying the puppet, I think. <laughs> was he serious? <laughs> when he said somebody looked just like you, he didn't want to say a puppet that looked just go- like you? He was goofing. Oh, okay. But people oh, no, he wasn't serious. Yeah. So. Yeah. All right. That's good times, Drew. Yeah, yeah hey, listen. Yeah. Drew, you started off doing uh, legitimate theater and <laughs> opera, musicals. Yeah. Now, uh, in, in, in the twilight of your career... You're uh, you're finding uh, a new audience. I like that. I like when the old guys find that young audience. It's like when uh, Tony, Tony Bennett Tony, Tony did Bennett it. Tony Bennett or uh, when uh, Tom Jones. Tom Jones that. was singing uh, uh, "Unbelievable." Yeah. Let, let me let's play that Missy Elliott song. Can we play? I, I'd love to just. What do they call it when you sort of rap? Is there a name for like rap freestyle? A little freestyle. freestyle? Yeah. Well, no, you're not freestyling. Oh, okay. You can't read off a page and freestyle. That's my version of freestyle. How much? How free can I be? You want to bust a rhyme? Bust a rhyme. Yeah, there we go. I played the uh, crank anchor save for my friend Curtis. Uh-huh. And, uh huh. He's doing it. You gotta come in. Yeah. Here we go. Use our cues, our sues, our views, our views, our twos, our cues, our kizus, my kizzer, who zigger, I zig. Yeah. It's, it's always like it's all kizzer. It's always like no sound. Was he? Oh, zoom, zoom, Z. Mm-hmm. Yeah, true. I'm telling you. True, I could see that being, that that could be your thing, like uh, whole... Dynamite or Here Comes the Judge. <laughs> the might will be, well, Zoom, Zoom, Z. Yeah. See, you, you, you're you uh, you're doing like no, my the view. It'll be my kids. My kids are, you're yeah. doing the, you're on the view. They got all those yeah. uh, fat white chicks in the audience yeah. all laughing. Sarah? <laughs> Hello? You're 25? Yeah. Look at Ken. What's up? <laughs> Losing it. Ken, it's a little, a little distracting. Engineer Anderson is not here. It's not here tonight, and Engineer Ken has been sitting in all week, and it's distracting to see him laugh. I, it must <laughs> to see, well to see emotion. Well, there's Any, two, there are two things the that are distracting about uh, Engineer Ken. A, he listens to the show. I, uh, no, I can't believe that. I find that to be yeah. more pressure than I can deal with. <laughs> Certainly, we're not used to it. And then, uh, then B, he's laughing. It, it really, it's really, you know, it's it's like if you came home from work and your cat came running up to greet you at the door and was like, hey, can I get your slippers? What do you need? You look good. Did you have a good day? What would you do, lose weight, boss? Yeah, we're so used to uh, staring at the back of producer Ann's head, having Anderson roll his eyes when he asks him for anything, tear with that puss on. <laughs> what do you mean? So, uh, I never heard of Dwight Eisenhower. That, that, that's just because you're old. You're old. Uh, you ever heard of Gerald Ford? No, because I'm hip. No, I'm young. I wouldn't know who that was. Uh, about, George Washington? How about Led Zeppelin or uh, George Washington? No. No square. Uh, yeah. Sarah? Yeah. Go ahead. Hi. Um, hello? Yeah, we're yeah. here. Okay. Um, uh, I had a question for Dr. Drew. Yeah. Okay. Um. About six months ago, okay. I had an ectopic pregnancy, and um, I had a, um, I ended up having laparoscopy surgery and a methotrexate shot in the yep. same day. Right. And um, I, let's go back a little history, though. Um, I had an ectopic pregnancy like six years ago. Right. Once yeah. you have that, that puts you at risk, right? Yeah. Okay. But I also had taken, when I thought I might have gotten pregnant, I right. had taken a morning after pill. Well, it didn't work. It didn't work, but it's... Would it be the morning after pill could have maybe caused the ectopic pregnancy? Absolutely nothing to do with it. Your really? your tubes aren't working right for some reason, and that's okay. why you get the ectopic pregnancy. This is exactly my point about the morning after pill. If you take it and the egg has already been released, you get pregnant. And True. if in your case, it didn't quite make it all the way down to the uterus. You don't explain with the ectopic pregnancy. Shut up. You don't explain with ectopic pregnancy. Ectopic pregnancy means a tubal pregnancy. That's pregnancy so you should say that every yeah, time. Good thing. Yes, yeah, good times. Okay. Well, um, so you know, yeah. you need to, you need to get with something. Did you ever have a what's called a hysterosalpingogram? A what? Hysterosalpingogram. No. 
I've never heard of that. It's, it's something they they do a study on your tube, the dye study, to see what's going on, why this is happening. And oh, really? If you plan to get pregnant again, that needs to be done. Okay. Well, I've had I actually had one kid. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. So and it came, everything came out fine. What's so his that, name? What's his name? Yeah. Seth. Oh. You want to <laughs> have a gay son? No. Well, you're on your way. Hey, he's named after a, an Egyptian god. Yeah, the god of blowing guys. <laughs> mm -hmm. No. Ramses in the ass. No. Yes. yes. <laughs> All right. Uh. Anyway, I don't good. like any parents that pull that crap or is named after Egyptian, whatever. I hate that crap. It means well, everybody flower. Oh, kiss my ass. Well, the names have some sort of heritage like that. All names have something weird. Yeah, but I don't like when people tell you what it means. I used to work with a Filipino guy named Pogi. Pogi? Pogi. Always told me it meant handsome. Mm. It means handsome. And it was kind of cute that he was Pogi, but... it. In his native Philippines, he's named Handsome. How'd he look? He wasn't a bad-looking kid, I got to tell you. He wasn't bad-looking until Maybe the a, uh, he was ripping a piece of uh, red oak on a little uh, table saw, and it bound up, and it shot straight into his mouth and mashed his uh, front teeth and stuff. Oh, you know, oak is, like, rock hard, and he was, we're on a job, and we had a little portable table saw, and he was, like, trying to rip it, uh, rip it meaning... Uh, this cross cutting is this way and ripping it sort of lengthwise, trying to shave it down, and it bound up and it just jammed him right in the face. Wow! Blood everywhere. Who? Yeah, Pogi's not so Pogi anymore. Well, is maybe, he? maybe the Filipinos have a heritage, or at least a habit or culture similar to the Hispanics. Yeah. Where, where Pogi is they like, call you what you are. They call you what you are. Yeah. If you're Mexican, and you're fat. They just call you Gordo. 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 Yeah. They just call you fat. All right. Where are we, Drew? I'm done talking to uh, six, what's her name. Six. Now let's talk to um, Adam is the Hebrew word for man. <laughs> Who wrote that, Tara? No. <laughs> Brian wrote that down. No. Yeah. <laughs> Shocking. Well, score one for Brian. Uh, Chris? Yeah. You're 23? Yeah. What's up? Um, lately, all the girls I've been dating, they just been real crazy and psycho. Mm-hmm. And, like, I'm just wondering why I keep running into these type of females. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe you're attracted to that kind of girl. I don't I don't see why. I mean, it's never been like that before. Well, it, when you say lately, you mean the last five girls you've dated? Yeah, pretty much. Hmm. What do you mean, psycho? Well, yeah, what I do mean, you mean? I mean, um... One of them, I was uh, picking her up from work, and she was trying to hit me in the head with uh, CD cases. And Why? So you picked her up from work. Did you attack her? <laughs> Excuse me? Had you attacked her? No. Um, I was picking her up from work, and uh, my friend, he had to get home because he was driving. And uh, I just told her to get in the car, and she flipped out. Okay, so it's just a sort of aggressive women you're talking about. Women yeah. Are physically aggressive. Yeah. I think that's just a bad run. Yeah. And by the way, Drew is the Greek word for man. <laughs> so says. Is that right? The it, really? We're oh. both. We both. Maybe every name's a Greek. Every every every, every dude name is a is a Greek word for dude. No, no? Like Jordan is like the river and the rock and all this kind all of right. stuff. Hey, uh, Chris. How yeah. weird is that? It's it's <laughs> marginally weird, but I'm gonna get over it. <laughs> That's good. Chris? Yeah. Uh, all right, so you, you, you're getting caught up with crazy chicks. You need to meet them in a better place. Where are you meeting them? Uh, strip clubs. Okay, well, right, there well, you go. There you have it. <laughs> what do you do for a living? I'm a cook. What kind of cook? Uh, line cook. Line cook. Where do you work? Uh, I work at different restaurants around uh, Rochester. Yeah. Make, make any money? Uh, some places you do, some places you don't. You know, yeah, make it ten or above. No, nah, that's not bad. About uh, yeah, about eight minutes ago, uh, Drew was saying to someone, "Find out where uh, what flights are going into Rochester." Yeah, direct Which flights. Is direct flights. Weird, right yeah, yeah, because Drew. considering it's the first time anyone's ever called and men mentioned Rochester. Yeah. Drew, so Chris. he may be coming to see you. You can make him a Denver omelet. Chris, yeah, do you ever uh, make any speeches? Yeah, I'm coming. I'm coming out there in the uh, U of R. Yeah, uh, it's coming out somewhere, right? Yeah, I don't know the I don't know the school or the date yet, but it's in the fall. Definitely coming out there. Okay. Hey, and Adam may be coming with me, so yeah. I'm trying to convince him to come. <laughs> he can convince an airline to give a direct flight don't from hold LA. Your breath. 
Hey, let me tell you this. I might come out there if I could get some goddamn salsa, salsa without uh, getting the stink eye from the waitress. In, in Rochester? Anywhere in New York. You can go out to uh, Don Pablo's. All right. I'm telling you, you go to, you go to New York. You, you go to one of those delis. You get the Denver omelet, and you go, uh, can I have a little side of salsa? And she's like, huh? You're like, you know, a little, a little chopped up, a little picante sauce. And they're like, Pfft. let's go back to California, puss. They get, they get, they get, like, they physically, they actually, they have a reaction. Yeah. They get angry. Yeah. Really? I mean, is that, that the craziest thing in the world? I like a little salsa on my omelet? Yeah, I got to smother everything in A1 and ketchup. They will get, go, go to New York, go to a deli. Uh, Try to get a little come, salsa, they get come angry. On, come on with me, we'll experiment. No. Come on. I'm not going to Rochester, New York until Rochester, Minnesota changes its name. <laughs> I don't like the idea of big cities having the same name. Uh. It's it's the world's worst idea. I don't know which one of you came first. I don't know which one of you has a better football team. I don't know which one of you has a higher population or the, who has a higher GPA in their po- among, amongst their populace. Or if they just got to flip a coin or if the two mayors have to wrestle. Whatever it is, one of them's got to change their name. Remember... Uh, Remember, remember, once in a while a band would come out, like the Charlatans, you know? <laughs> and then they had to have the Charlatans UK. But Rochester, you see Minnesota, what I'm saying? Yeah, like you you got to change it. You don't want it just a Rochester M- MN. Do you remember the huge argument we got on the airplane about Rochester? Yeah, was that Rochester? It's what it was. Oh, God. I was saying, I was saying, Drew, Rochester's in uh, New York. And he was like, no, it's in Minnesota. And we were oh, like, yeah. it almost came to blows. Yeah. We're, we're starting to yell at each other on the airplane. I think that Rochester, Minnesota, ought to just change its name to Mike Kizza. <laughs> Don't you? Robin? Yeah. You're 18? No, I'm 16. All right. All What's right. up? Um, I just had a question for Drew. Yeah. Um, whenever my boyfriend fingers me, I can't have an orgasm. I just get, like, to a really high in that spot. And we were, as soon as I turned 18, I was wanting to get married. And, um... I was wondering if whenever I did have sex with him, if I would have an orgasm. Probably only with oral sex, like most women that age, if not all okay. women that age. What's, uh, what century are you calling from, Robin? <laughs> Sounds like she's uh, 18. 18, yeah. late 18-something. Yeah. No, when I... me and my boyfriend <laughs> gets married, I'd be wanting to get pregnant. <laughs> Jesus Christ, baby, what's going on? How are you doing in school? Good. Good? Yeah. No, it's I'm doing well. well. <laughs> hey, what's going on? What grade are you in? I'm senior. At 16? Yeah. That's well, I'm turning se- 17. Senior and junior high. I was in 17th next year. She's in 8th grade. Got it. Uh, and you're going to graduate? Yes. And uh, you... Uh, you gonna go off to college? College? I'm not sure yet. Keeping uh, keeping your options open. Yeah. All right. And uh, why why do you want to get married, and get pregnant, and all that? I don't want to get pregnant. Well, why do you want to get married so soon? I'm not sure if I did. I was just wondering. See, well, I'm not having sex until I'm married. I was just wondering what? if there's any way I could have an orgasm without sex. Yes, you can. Without I, sex, I do it yes. all the time. Yes, Adam does it all. Oh. I did it for many, many years before he had sex. Did it. Do it. And and continues to have it. Yeah. That's right. It's a passion, Drew. You don't let that go just because you get married. <laughs> hey, Robin? Yeah. You don't sound like a Robin. She doesn't sound, <laughs> you, you ever met a Robin that sounded like Robin? Is that really your name? Yeah. It really is? Yeah. Wow. She doesn't sound like a Robin, does she? <laughs> All right. Okay, listen. You're fine. You can, You can get an orgasm. You, what, you, you what, what, what about oral sex? She's not doing that yet. What about the tub? How about masturbating in the bathtub? Uh, I've done that. Or the water tower, or whatever you have over there. Does that work? Uh, no, it doesn't. Doesn't no. work. Okay. Do you let the water run directly on your clitoris? Hmm. Yes. True. I my friend told me to do that, and I tried it because it works for her. There okay. All right. You're, you're fine. You'll figure this out. It, it You'll hit start, your stride. You're a little young. Often in women, it doesn't kick in until about 20 or so. So you're going to be senior. You're going to be senior next year. Yeah. See, that's what I was wondering. I had heard you say that it don't hit till you're about 20 a lot of times. I was wondering if I did get married at 18, if I'd be able to have one. 
It's hard to yeah. say. But you will definitely not have one with intercourse. Uh, okay. Well, maybe not. No, no. All right. D don't get married at 18. Okay. Take your time. Uh, look, let, let me explain something. If, if, if you want to keep your virginity until you're, until you're ready to get married, that's great. I uh, respect that, and I applaud that. But if that just means you get married at 17 and a half, then you're a retard. Right. And now, now you're sort of, what you're doing is you're, you're, you're sort of keeping your virginity on a technicality, but right. you're not even screwing up your life. Right, right, right. It's sort of like, uh, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to cut off my hand so I don't lose it one day in an industrial accident. Right. Right. Good, good not to want to lose your hand in an industrial accident. Bad to cut it off yourself in advance. Right. Deidre, that's solid. Well done. Thank you. Nicole? Hi. You're 20? <laughs> yes, I'm 20. How are you guys tonight? We're good. Good. Well, uh, I thought I would call and ask Dr. Drew a question because mm -hmm. there aren't any doctors that seem to know what's going on with me mm -hmm. right now. Okay. So um, about three months ago, um, I started bleeding and having some pains that feel like maybe in my um, ovaries mm -hmm. and I was feeling really nauseous like in the morning it was it's probably what symptoms would be like if I was pregnant like gagging and just feeling really sick so I went to the, this doctor who was an OBGYN and he told me oh well you have um, a yeast infection hmm. there's nothing I mean there's no I have no burning no itching nothing it's in it's the inside like the walls of my vagina that hurt have you been sexually painful. have you been sexually active well, yes, but not right now. Is there any chance you've been exposed to herpes? No, not at all. And that's the thing, too. I haven't had anything, nothing down there, and I've had tests that have all come back negative. What do you mean, nothing down there? Well, like, I have never seen any, you know, there's, there's I don't have. Don't no, no cauliflower, no cauliflower yeah. grown out of there. You, you don't no, see, nothing. you don't, you wouldn't see herpes, you just have pain. No, I mean, I always use a condom, so oh, okay. I'm. All right, but there's, so there's a possibility. Drew's wishing herpes upon you right now. No, it's the one the thing that can create a sort of mysterious pain. You don't understand why. It sort of right. Has, so. Well, it was the bleeding, like the spotting for two two months that really bothered me, too. Why? And why? Why? Why did it bother me? Why? Because I've been on the pill on and off for six months, and I've never had bleeding every day like that. Okay, well, that's a common side effect of being on the pill. So I know, but the, the, you know, they also did uh, an ultrasound where right. they looked, yeah. and he said that he didn't see anything that was like a cyst or anything like that. Good. And he, so after he said it was a yeast infection and I came back, then he said, oh, well, it's an infection in your uterus. Okay. He put me on antibiotics for 10 days, and it didn't really do anything. Okay. But you still also on the wrong pill because that's why you're spotting. Right. Well, I went, then I went to my nurse practitioner who I always see, mm -hmm. and she said, you know, I don't want you on the pill at all. Okay. You know, get off of it. So I'm off it, and she put me on antibiotic. Okay. Um, one that fights bacteria and one that kills bacteria. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But I don't feel like it's working. And I and she had mentioned endometriosis, and uh, that really scares me. <laughs> well, that that's a possibility still, and they might have seen that in the ultrasound, but not necessarily. Honey, it so, sounds like you got a lemon. Uh, so you got to really, take that thing back. <laughs> there, there's still there are multiple possibilities. Well, the warranty's still there going, right? right? Many, many possibilities here. One is endometriosis, but that's not particularly likely. Another is herpes that came and went, and during a time which you're having an abnormal reaction to the pill, uh -huh. it could all just be the the pill. It could be other hormonal imbalances. In other words, you could have a thyroid problem. Think something going on in the noggin? Uh, no, not necessarily. I mm. think she's just anxious about she's what's happening. She's very careful, though. She's very anxious about what's happening. That's for sure. But she's super careful. But you know what I mean? Yeah. She's very kind. She's careful. anxious. She's anxious. No doubt about it. That's why. That's why having a little spotting. It's a big catastrophe for her. Right. Uh, it's not. You know, it's for real. It's funny. It's bothering it. Hold on. Nicole? Yes. You need you need to take a chill pill. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. <laughs> there you go. So anyway, so so those are all The important thing is that she keeps going back and being reevaluated until either it goes away, which it might without an answer. You may never come up with a thorough answer for this. Mm -hmm. Or and I would hope that they would culture you for herpes because that's still a real possibility here. And this all could just be related to reaction to the pill you had. It have spotting mid-cycle on the birth control pill, completely normal, completely normal. And sometimes when the intermediate is unstable like that, you will get some pain. Boring. Right. 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 Let me say this. Yeah. I've been thinking about Uday and Kuse, <laughs> and, uh, and you know, here's the problem. We had these guys all pinned down in some uh, brick palace. First off, every, every house in that part of the region is built like a bunker. There's no wood. 
And everything's built with this block. Yeah, what is that? It doesn't have any lumber. Oh, really? i got to build everything out of camel dung. And cement. So all everything's, everything's cement. It's too bad they don't have earthquakes around there. <laughs> Man, that place go right down. It'd be great. Unless God, this God should hit him with an earthquake. Yeah, but steel. What's he bugging us for in California? Yeah. Northern California. He should be working on that part of the yeah, region. If it's steel reinforced, though, does it still? Just falls with apart. earthquake? Yeah. yeah. It's it's not... Uh, here, masonry is real bad with yeah. an earthquake. Yeah. All the chimneys come, come down yeah. immediately. You know, framed houses, wood frame houses, no big deal. Yeah. That's why whenever those things hit in Mexico, whenever those things hit in, like, Peru and stuff, pow. I mean, they just... They, it just crumbles the whole city. All that devastation you see in earthquakes... You only see masonry buildings yeah, toppled yeah. over yeah. all the time. Once in a while, you see wood frame buildings have toppled over because the masonry parking, sub, subterranean parking lot crumbled. Mm-hmm. But it's always always the masonry that goes. Right. But anyway, masonry, bad for an earthquake, great for a shootout, though. Yeah. That place was just all concrete reinforced. Huh. You know, bullets don't pass through it. Huh. You know, all those movies, all those movies where they're getting in a shootout. Wood. Those Bonnie and Clyde, you know. They always bust out the window with the butt of the gun, which I, I would just shoot through the window, by the way. I wouldn't bother busting through the window. Like, hey, everybody, get ready to shoot. Here we go. You'll be hearing the sound of glass breaking. And I'll be shooting in the uh, next few moments. So you want to listen for that. No, I would just start shooting through the window, number one. Number two, you know, the guys lean up against the wall. Then they pop out, shoot a th- few rounds through the window. Then they lean back through the wall again. The wall, especially in those old Bonnie and Clyde houses, they had like three eighths worth of uh, redwood clapboard on the side. You know, you, BB gun go through that ass. Then the BB has to travel through air because yeah. uh, that's the wall. Yeah. No, no insulation or anything unless you caught a stud, but not not much chance of that. And then they go through the backside, a little bit of plaster. It's not going to slow down a bullet, really. Wow. They pass right through it. They always do it in the movie. They act like you know, guy getting a shootout would be behind a folding chair. <laughs> you know, bullets just pass through like ten things. You know, like, whenever they do that stuff, like, you know, Kennedy gets shot, the bullet goes through him, exits his neck, goes through his knee, ricochets off this, hits Senator so-and-so there, kills yeah. his wife, goes through a car, engine yeah. block, kills that. <laughs> the bullets go through, like, 30 things before they stop. That's yeah. the that's the idea. Yeah. But anyway, they, not a lot of bullets went through that place. But, he, but I was thinking, these guys ultimately always kill themselves. We never get the satisfaction of killing them. Mm-hmm. They realize they're surrounded. They're, they're starting to hypothesize mm-hmm. that uh, Uday, at least, uh, both their names, Pig Latin, by the way. <laughs> I, 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 no one brought, brings up, but I just, it dawned on me there, I was trying. Like, it means dude in Pig Latin. <laughs> <laughs> Uday. I mean, here's the thing. These guys, ultimately, they're surrounded. They, they take their own life. Right. It's nice that they're dead, and I appreciate the, the gesture and everything, but... Never the satisfaction of putting them to death, you know, of executing them the way they executed so many people and so many families over the years. But I started thinking about it. I was thinking, it's a, it's Hitler. Yeah. No satisfaction at all. All the Jews, all the all the Russians, all the all, all the Frenchmen. Well, I don't know if the Frenchmen would want to get their hands dirty with torturing Hitler, but all the people this guy terrorized. And at the end, he drinks a little poison. He puts a gun in his mouth. Uh-huh. He's gone. No. Nah, uh, here's what I say. Now with DNA, Rip, we get their DNA, up. we put them back together, then we do with them what we will. And clone the nose. We clone <laughs> Uday's head. And, and it's now, it's nonstop 24. And we, like, have torture appointments and stuff. Here's a family, he terrorized, he terrorized the national soccer team. The goalie wants to come over and kick him in the nuts for uh, two days. I mean, just, he's got, hey! And, and, and if we kill this one, like we start torturing them too much, we just build another one. We, we have backup clones. And we start doing it with everybody. We bring back Hitler. Somebody, you know, these, these poor girls we talk to, it's like, what happened? Yeah, their dad molested him for 17 years, and then he OD'd. No, no, no. That guy, he comes back. He comes back, and we just jab him with the sprinkler keys. <laughs> if the guy molested him, we, we do whatever. These, these prisoners, you know, these, these Nazi war criminals are biting the cyanide capsules. They prisoners that hang themselves before they ever get to trial. We bring them all back, and we torture them. Genius, I tell you. This is a great idea, and this is what great reality. Talking? Great reality TV oh, right here. Well, that makes television. Great reality TV. That's appointment reality TV. We need to create a game out of it, too, though. You know my other reality TV show I came up with today? 
the guy's going to get thirty million dollars who uh, ratted out uh, Uday and uh, Kuse. Yeah. But he's on the lam. Oh really? Oh yeah. yeah. He's uh, they don't like stoolies over there in that part of the country, you know. He uh, dropped the dime and uh, now he's got taken on the lam. Although, if uh, Salman uh, Rushdie's any uh, any any example of them getting rid of uh, the infidel, this guy's in good shape because he's been on their hit list for like uh, 25 years and he's just living in some Manhattan condo right now. But the point is, is they're going. The guy's got 30 million. He's going to get his 30 million dollars, but he's got taken on the lam. And you hear they can make him pay taxes on it. They are. <laughs> so funny. Of course. But anyway, here's the. Who's making him pay tax? What what taxes? I heard that on TV. Where is he? I mean, Iraqi taxes? No, go, U.S. government taxes. Why U.S. government? He's probably an Iraqi I mean, citizen no, living in Iraq. Uh, the point is, is he's got to take his family. He's got to take what's left of his $30 million. He's got to take it on the lamb. Yeah. This is a good reality show. Ooh. Follow this guy called On the Lamb. On the Lamb. On the Lamb. Plus, those people like lamb. <laughs> they eat lamb. Those people. I think it has a sexual connotation in that part of the country really? on the land. Oh, yes, really? I'm, I'm almost sure it does. Nice. I think that would that be offensive. Will, that'll sell more. That would be offensive. No. Okay. okay. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back. Hey, yo, Loveline. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number. 1-800-L-O-V-E-191. All righty, then. Let's get back to the phones and uh, speak to uh, Misty, who's 24. Misty? Hi there. Hey. Hi. My question is for Dr. Drew. Mm-hmm. Um, what I'm wondering is I've been gay uh, for about 10 years, mm. and I'm wondering if uh, I've always kind of felt like it, it wasn't, like I want to be straight, still and i've heard through friends that there's programs like uh especially through christian organizations that you can go to where they you know basically it's like therapy but also with religion combined where they can reverse homosexuality uh there's some experimental treatments going on in mexico i hear for this (laughs) Uh, there's no i I don't want to go and i'm really basically i thought it was like a teenage thing like a phase but I'm still finding myself involved in relationships with women. All right, well, here's the deal. Well, we'll, we'll straighten it. Yeah. We'll straighten this out. Th- there is no legitimate, specific treatment to change sexual orientation. It just uh, really does not exist in any legitimate sense. Mm-hmm. However, uh, sometimes when people sort through, when people are kind of on the fence like you are, mm-hmm. and they sort through their traumas and their upbringing, sometimes they gain some clarity one way or the other about their sexual orientation. Yeah. So what, what happened? What, anything happened to you? Oh, yeah. Watch. Yeah. So, so he got molested? Mm-hmm. Who did it? Dad. Um, a family member, and then um, there was one other time with people outside the family. Yeah. Oh. Any of those people dead? No. Okay, because we, we, you know, when they do die, I can bring them back and torture them. Great. And by the way, I don't know what the laws are against torturing clones. I don't think there's anything on the books. Not yet. You want to catch up with you, but in the meantime. In the meantime, I stay one step ahead of the law. But you, she's got somebody living you can torture in this case. Oh, okay. I guess we can make an exception. So well, your, your your dad did this to you? No, it was it was a sibling. Brother? Um, yeah. For how long? Um, it was several times throughout my life. Yeesh. Several times, but that's mm-hmm. that's not for how long. How long? How old were you? Um, I was seven. My first memory was when I was two. Oh my God. Um, yeah, and it kind of he he made advances t- um, towards me up until like age fourteen. Mm-hmm. Did you have sex with him? No. What'd you do? Um, I remember he performed oral sex on me. What was wrong with him? Uh, he was kind of really messed up from the start. He had ADD and was a, you know, just now he has schizophrenia. Mm. Okay. He's older now, so he's been had problems from the beginning. Oh. Do you forgive him? Um, I haven't done that. I'm seeing a therapist now. <laughs> Still pretty angry about it, but. All right. Well, so that that's where you focus your attention right now and get just working. Well, what worries? Your... I just, I just want to ask the therapist that I'm seeing. She's she seems to kind of reinforce like the you know, my homosexual feelings, like, telling me not to, just to allow myself to feel them, and... Yeah, yeah. Well, know, she's doing what all therapists do. They, you know, <laughs> they don't like to cause trouble. 
I mean, they're just trying to they're trying to kill the clock. They go into the four corners like the old college basketball teams don't, do, and they try yeah. to knock that clock down so they can get their money and get out of there. Don't focus so much on why am I this, why am I that, what am I into kind of feelings right now. Sort through the residual emotional experiences, what's implicitly left on your <coughs> brain mechanisms from yeah. the trauma, and see if you can sort of have a increasingly flexible and deeper range of feelings in the presence of your therapist and if you're able to do that again there will be i think more clarity about your sexual orientation you may either a feel better about being gay or b kind of decide you're not here's the problem un unfortunately going back and sort of fixing whatever it is made you gay in the first place still leaves you gay usually does usually does on uh 90 percent. yeah it's weird i mean but y your boy you know your your uh, a life of your brother uh, attempting to have sex with you is enough to screw you up. And I, I think women, women are just much more fluid that way. I think men are the same way. I think men are, once their major is declared, they're they're done. Once they get a taste for dork, it's 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 like a, it's like when a wolf when it tastes blood for the first chum. time. There used to be a lot of talk about that. I don't know yeah. when it tastes blood. When an animal tastes human blood for the first time, I, I it was a big deal. I, I don't know why no one seems to talk about animals tasting human blood anymore. But uh, when they taste a human human penis for the first time, it's game on. But I don't think guys get pushed over to gay as easily. I, I don't know. It, they're not as flexible. It, no, nothing could have made you gay. Um. Huh? You don't know. I mean, I don't know. Ooh. I don't. Do you think any, something could have made you gay too? So the right. How dare you? Well, the, the point you're making though is valid. Is that you probably need some biological predisposition? And yes. We don't know that either of us have that. Sarah. Hello. You're 20. Yep, I'm 20. What's up? Um, I just had a question for either of you. Um, recently, my boyfriend said that he had a surprise, and so he kind of like blindfolded me, and then when I opened my eyes. <laughs> I was, like, kind of strapped to the bed. He had, like, ankle and hand restraints and straps. You, and you, with your eyes closed? Shocked. With your eyes closed, you... Uh, well, I mean, I could feel him, like, you know, putting stuff on my wrist. But I this, really this, this happened to me. I When I opened my eyes, I was on the, the big hill of the Matterhorn, just ready to take the plunge. Just all of a sudden. Yeah, I... You when I closed my eyes, I was in my living room. I was wearing my uh, sweatpants. And opened your eyes, you were, you were on the Matterhorn. I didn't feel it. Didn't know. That's amazing. Did not. Well, did not that know. tells us a lot about Sarah. Sarah? Yeah, I'm All right, so really, I, you really had to close your close your eyes to be strapped to a bed? Like, you, that, that's like one of, the, one of the only things I can think of that wouldn't surprise you, you know, when you open them. <laughs> yeah, to my... Well, you, I, you don't... You I don't feel like, somebody slapping know. irons on my arms and legs, and <laughs> I open my eyes, and lo and behold, I was you, you immobilized. Know, let, me, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. If you were standing in front of your bed and you closed your eyes and then you walked over to your bed with your eyes closed, you lay down on your back and you just sort of spread your arms out and you put your head up by no, towards the ceiling, you just... open your eyes, would you be surprised you were looking at the ceiling? Oh, I was surprised that he did that. He's very, like, uh, what? You know, Okay. You wouldn't expect that. All right. So he was uh, getting a little naughty. Yeah. And All I right. Just, um... So the surprise began at the moment he told you to close your eyes. That's right. Right. Okay. I just I didn't know that anything like that would come from him. All right. I mean, I was I was surprised, and you know, I was just wondering if, like, you know, this is going to progress. If this is like a fetish or what, what does he say? We, how can fetish? we? How can, listen, we can't possibly answer that. What does he say? Is this something he's really into? Um, he he kind of wanted me to call himself. He doesn't really know. I mean, he said that it's something he was mm. kind of interested in when he was younger, but he's uh, not into, like... Yeah, did he paddle you while you were? Maybe it's bogus. No, no, he's not into, like, the whole, no, like... No, he's, just, he's just trying to do something to get you sort of more aroused. I think. He didn't want you to call. Yeah. He want, he, that's what she said? Uh, yes. Yeah, I didn't she, catch that. Yeah. He, he wanted her to call and find out. He no, wants please. answers, no, too. No, no, no. That's ridiculous. <laughs> this is this is either bogus or nonsense or whatever. No, it's not bogus. All right. Well, did you like it? What he did to you? Yeah, of yeah he's, he's right, right here. There. He's right here. It's yeah, not bogus. shocking. Right. Come on. <laughs> Listen, I'm a very important man, extremely important, and Drew, in his own right, is semi-important, and we both have important things to do, like take care of important problems. Or I can bitch about freeway conditions. But it, I, I don't need to talk to screw-ups. 
See what I'm saying? Right that, that, that. Screw up or screw balls? Screw balls. Okay. Sarah? This yeah. is it's Sarah number two, by the way. What's Hi. up? Drew, Hi. don't take two of the same name twice. No? You did that last night. Screwed you up? That doesn't screw me up. Screws everyone up. Right. Hi. Go ahead. What's up? Um, I am 23. Mm-hmm. And I've never had a boyfriend. And I had sex once, but it was a disaster. What happened? Um, it was with a guy at work, and uh, he invited me to hang out one night, and we went out, and I ended up, um, he smoked me out, and he gave me booze, and we ended so, up sleeping together. Mm -hmm. and well, why was there a disaster? Because um, I didn't really know him. I didn't really have any feelings for him. Yeah, but you just said you're incapable of feelings for people like that anyway. Yeah. So why was this a disaster? Use the word disaster. Um, I the reason I'm calling that's related to that is because I have a really sure, I gotta answer that big fear of intimacy and sexuality. Yeah. And so any sex would be a disaster. Yeah. With anybody. Yeah. You a big gal? No. no. Raped, sexually abused or something. No. Well, yeah, that's my question. I actually, my original question was that I was wondering what you think, Dr. Drew, about. Um, some people think that you can't repress memories of sexual abuse, and some people think you can. And you, you I don't can, have any memories. You can, you can definitely repress, before memory functions, before your hippocampal mechanisms develop to the point that you can lay down what are called explicit memories, early sexual abuse leaves what are called implicit memories, things like you're describing. Yeah. So it's possible to have severe abuse before you can physically remember them. Right. Yeah. Why? Who did this to you? Who did she what? She can't remember. I know, but who do you think did it? I have no idea. I mean, who did what? Well, that's talk about you being sexually molested. Well, what, what was your family like? Were your parents? Uh... My parents are really cool. I have a good relationship with them, but I've always um, been really scared of close relationships in general. Like I remember when I was a kid, sometimes my parents, when they would like be tucking me in and saying good night, they'd say like, you know, I love you, honey, and it would like I, I would get scared. Like I've had psychosomatic um, stuff coming up. You adopted? Up from... Huh? Are you adopted? No. Okay. You sure? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, don't freak around, Drew. <laughs> hey, Sarah, look. Here's the thing. Uh, nine out of ten times, these things are caused by something. Yeah. Once in a while, uh, it's like, I don't know, lung cancer. The guy worked in a, in a coal mine. The guy was a three-pack-a-day smoker. But sometimes people just get lung cancer are in great shape. Yeah. They just get it. You know, maybe you, you know, one out of every X amount of women just has difficulty with intimacy. Yeah. Not, not based on too much other than that. Yeah. So maybe that's you. E either way, a l little therapy wouldn't hurt. I've gone to a couple of therapists. Yeah. Um, last night I was listening, to Dr. Drew, and you were saying um, that there's a couple of myths about therapy that changes can be made, like cognitively or behaviorally. Mm -hmm. And I've gone to see a couple of different therapists, one of which dealt with things really behaviorally, where she was like, the only way you can change things is by changing your behavior. The other therapist that I've been seeing more recently is, he just kind of, he doesn't really have any kind of a, an approach that I can define. He just kind of likes to talk and, and stuff. And well, I'm really... What I was specifically referring to is... just liking to talk. Yeah, is, is, All right, I'm bored. Drew. Is, is recovering from trauma, which I suspect, if there's anything in your past, there's something like that there that might have triggered all this. And in trauma situations, you can't, you can't choose your way or behave your way out of the biological mechanisms that are in place. But to sitting and talking, you can actually for long, long periods of time. And so that, the reason you left is that may have been very uncomfortable for you as you tried to, to, to sort of have these experiences in the presence of another person. Yeah. So you need to get back in and hang in with it. No. Uh, I wouldn't sit around and try to think back to the time no. you were three and your uh -uh. dad molested you, no. except for you can't remember it. Not important. And, uh, by the way, it's marginally unfair to your dad who probably didn't molest right. you. Right, right. As you walk around, your kid thinking you molested you or freaked right. out. The idea is you need to develop new mechanisms in the present in terms of being able to have experiences in the present and with another person. All right. That's it. All right, we're going to take a break. When we come back, uh, we've got a question about uh, flavored condoms. we got a question about the uh, ex-boyfriend made her get her tubes tied, then beat her and left her. Wait a minute. That's the money call. Desi? Yeah. Your, uh, you. your boyfriend uh, made you get your tubes tied? Well, what happened was... Is All right. <laughs> Money, huh? <laughs> they never, uh, whenever we're trying to sell that thing for her to go to break, they never go, yes. They always go, well, 
All right, we're going to take a quick break. We'll get back with Desi, find out about the tubes tying and the beating after this. Hey, everybody. Desi hung up. She did. She thought you went to her and, like, blew her off or something, I guess. Oh, that teeth hurt. Bad planning. Mm. The shade of gummy orange. Oh, Jesus Christ. I have the good sense not to eat that. Hurts my teeth. Yeah. What the hell sugar hurt your teeth for? Not the sugar, it's the gummy sugar. It's like, it's just teeth on edge. I just ate a whole box of junk. I still got these posts in my... I'm missing all the teeth on my left side, so I'm eating on my right side. Oh. Awful. It's like... I, I got a bunch of teeth missing in my mouth. I just got this post. I got to get them redone. But it, it's like anything but go back to the dentist. Uh, oh, true. Good times, right? Huh? Yeah. Roxanne? Yeah? You're 21? Yes, sir. What's up? Hi. Um, let me start off by saying thank you for letting me come on your show. But um, I've been having this problem. It's a good strategy, don't you think? I like well, that. that. No yeah. one's ever said well, that. Well done, Roxanne. Well done. We like you. Oh, you like me? Yeah. Well, you're not too bad yourself. <laughs> Thanks. Not as a person, but as a caller. <laughs> oh, well, see, there you have it. What's the question? Um, the question is, I'm, okay, I'm majoring in psychology myself, and Dr. Drew, I had a question, because my, uh, the professor didn't go well into detail about it. Um, I had this high school sweetheart who I ended up getting engaged with, but the five years that I was with them, I was never able to have an orgasm. Mm -hmm. So when you don't expect it, you don't know what it is, so you just go with the flow kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Well, um, by, the way, by the way, there's not a male on earth that could say something like that. You say well, go with the flow. She's never had one. So are, you, are you faking them? Yeah. Oh, boy. All right. Yeah, yeah that, that's not that's, going that's with the flow. Yeah. That's, <laughs> that's, that's acting. Well, yeah, I'm an actress also. All right, keep going. Struggling actress. So keep going. Struggling so, for um, an orgasm. I uh, <laughs> I meet I met somebody at a party and turns out the first time that I cheated on my fiance with this guy he couldn't even get it inside of me like it was completely shut and I know there's some women suffer from some kind of um disorder but I couldn't remember the name right off the top it's called, of my it's called head. vaginismus what was it again vaginismus but you, vaginismus is a recurrent problem. Just being nervous, being anxious, you're can, tense, can, can cause a shutdown like that. So yeah, you're cheating, you're at a party, you just you just clamp down. So um, that's what it was. Are right, you <laughs> listening? Like, Are you listening to Drew? Yes, I am listening. Okay. So you were just nervous. Yeah, you clinched. Um. So the second time, I mean, he was able to. Um, Same guy. Yeah. Uh -huh. And I had an orgasm. Second time, different different party, different situation. Same guy, but different night. Yes. Less say yes. Yeah. Just say yes. But um, I was able to have an orgasm. With intercourse or with... Uh, with intercourse. Oh, wow. Interesting. All right. You, you, okay. Break up with your fiancé. I you did. Please? Good. I oh, did. Excellent. Yeah. It's not an 80-20 relationship, if you will. But, um, what? It's a what? It's not an 80-20. 80-20. What does that mean? It's not an 80-20. You know how they say a 50-50 relationship? Yeah. He, it was more like an 80-20. You were the 20. Yeah. Right. Okay. But um, my question was, could that disorder be from, I remember when I was, I mean, I was like a little girl, I was molested. Uh-huh. I mean, could that come from it? Yes. 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 In fact, what you'll tend to do is you'll you'll tend to go through cycles of deprivation where you are not sexual in periods where you're hypersexual, and you're more likely to be hypersexual and experience sort of disavowed aspects of yourself with guys that remind you of your victimizer bad guys All right. because you feel bad about it, you feel ashamed of your sexuality because of the abuse and then when they see you get around to guys that are sort of dangerous it allows you access to that part of yourself and hey you uh, know. Roxanne yes uh, so you broke up with your fiance yes are you with this guy that gave you the orgasm um no actually we're really good friends okay it's kind of like when it's convenient <laughs> alright well you yeah. need to get treatment for the trauma right. for the and abuse, don't, for sure. don't don't give the guy the service agreement yeah. The guy's just screwing her. Right. Yeah, he's, don't he's do an unavailable that. guy. Yeah, yeah, like an unavailable guy. Yeah. All right. So uh, the stick in college. I'm smelling junior college. I, I, I can't help it. Roxanne? Yes? Community college? Yeah, community college. All right. There we go. 
See, even when someone says, I'm going to college, I'm majoring in Ken psychology. Loves I love that. My professor. <laughs> professor. Professor who? Yeah. You can't be a professor at a junior college. Believe me, you're, you're barely like a, a notch above janitor. You, you people that teach over there, professor. How dare you? That, that's a slap in the face to all the real professors at the real colleges. My professor. I know junior college when I hear it. Now you, you, you sniff it. You smell it. Yeah. You know a dog can smell fear? I smell junior college. I thump you like a melon. It's like a snake. You, I think you get it from your tongue. Yeah. Put my little sensor out there. Taste junior <laughs> college. All right. Let's take a little break. How do I know, Drew? How do I know about junior college? Because I think like a junior college, or I walk like a junior college, I talk like a junior college, I live like a junior college. You see what I'm saying? You walk the walk. That's how I know. It's like when they go, in order to catch a thief, it's going to take a thief. Remember that one? Yeah, yeah. That's me with junior college. We'll be back. It's Love Line. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew, everybody. Phone number 1 800 L O V E 191. All right. Let's talk to John. John? Hey, guys. Hey, Johnny. What's going on? Doing well, buddy. That's good. So, you got a question about flavored condoms? Yes, I do. Let me start off by saying, Adam, you are a god. You're the funniest guy I've ever heard in my life. Got to say that. Really? And you've you've heard a few funny guys in your day, right? I've heard many a funny guys. Canada's a very funny place, you know. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. But, no, I've checked out your stuff on uh, with Kimmel and uh, also on Crank Anners. Very funny guy. Well, thank you, I, John. Thank you. Anyways, uh, question about flavored condoms. Throughout my years of going to nightclubs and raves, I've collected quite the amount of flavored condoms, never use them. Mm-hmm. Curious as to whether or not they're safe or not. Uh, my understanding is that you want to stay with the uh, Durex or Trojan. Okay. And that the colors and the flavors and all that stuff that are off sort of brand can be questionable. So all right. take particularly the colors. Really? Yeah. And we've been learning on this show recently that there may be something with the polyurethane, too. Though I, I... Uh, but, Drew, what, what about... I mean, if you're going to put condoms out, even if they're sort of novelty condoms, isn't it almost in a way like manufacturing seat belts or something? Like, isn't there certain standards that you have to meet? I, I can't imagine, I mean, with all the restriction, restrictions and limitations and stuff like that, and maybe some of it is just with the labeling, but it seems like there's a quick lawsuit here if you're just putting out sort of gag condoms right. in no, a sense. Right, there's probably some sort of minimum. I, I don't know. I know the Consumer Reports does reports every so often on it. Yeah. I, like and I also know that, involved that testing. Trojan's been working hard on trying to come out with a, ta- a flavored condom, like a mint one or something. That I heard they're know. coming out with a fluoridated condom. It's fluoridated with for, and for mint. For kids. A lot yeah. of kids don't get and, enough fluoride. And after they get the mint, I know you'll be impressed with this, Adam, they're going for a pina colada. Yeah. Because they want you to be able to experience the entire dental refreshing okay. experience. Okay. that's it. Now Drew got me going. <laughs> I was already mad at the dentist today because my teeth were hurting. But uh, Drew knows I go insane because every time I go to the dentist and I get that pumice where they fire up that tool and they do that pumice thing on my teeth. Mm. Little high-speed thing going. They bust out. They, for me, it's novelty. They bust out the pina colada. And I always tell them, go, go, go get the spearmint or the cinnamon. And they're like, well, we got p- pina colada. And I'm like, uh, I don't like pina colada in in a crushed rock form. I, I like pina colada, the cocktail. I don't like pina colada, the gritty paste. You, you, you understand that's where the difference and, is. And you don't really like it in the dentist's office. Really? No. What? Do, what? I, I close my eyes and I'm on some exotic beach somewhere far away. No, I'm on some crappy seat and Van Nuys getting beat up on by someone who's getting too much an hour. I told, here's what I tell them. I tell them, listen. They go, uh, people like pina colada. I said, listen, I like pina colada. I like brisket, too. Do you have a brisket pumice you could put in my mouth? How about liver and onion? <laughs> Frankfurter. Frankfurter. Well, it goes on and on. Maybe you have a goulash. I like, I like Hungarian food. Huh. But a little goulash or chicken paprikash. You retard. Here's what you need. You need the toothpaste flavor. That's what you're used to. You know what you scrub your teeth with, Drew? 
not a pina colada. Toothpaste. All dentists listen to me. Anything you put in someone's mouth, got to taste like nothing or toothpaste. That is, if you're scrubbing the teeth with it. Very distracting to have it uh, taste like an alcoholic beverage. So okay, if condoms go for pina colada, we need to stay with mint with that too. They're going for mint. Con- Trojans going. I, for I mint. can go. For, I can get down with mint. Yeah, mint I, is I can fine. Get smart. Yeah. Mint. Mint is fine. But yeah, don't, don't, don't go. Uh, or you could ironically go with like a kielbasa. But I, I'm scared people <laughs> would bite. People would bite. They would treat the sausage just like it would. They treat. They treat oh. it was like a sausage casing. Oh my God! Don't you think people would bite? That is a novelty flavor. Yes, of course. And then imagine, imagine they had kielbasa flavored and buns. Kiel, no, we uh, a little backdoor action. Yeah, dump, dump a stop it, stop a it. Mustard oh, on there. Oh, now here's 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 would here would be a horrible scenario. Yeah, kielbasa you put on the kielbasa flavored condom. Yeah. You're heading into the bedroom, but the dog heads you <gasps> off. And, oh, yeah. That's bad times. Yeah. Mustard flavored spermicide, uh, oh. phone screen or Brian suggests. All right, so anyway, I'm, I'm done with my. Uh, We've now come up with something, though. There's a crank anchors in this, by the way. What? The kielbasa condoms? No. Wendy? Hey, Adam, how are you? You're 23? Yeah. What's up? Um, well, I have this problem. I, I've been with my boyfriend for three and a half years, and I, he doesn't really want to have sex as much as he used to, as much as I want to, and it's making me want to stray, and I, I did a couple of times already. But you know, how often does he want this? Huh? How often does he want to do it? Um, Trick question. Like twice a week. And what, do you, and what is it you want to do? Uh, like every day. All right. Twice a week's normal. And you say stray. Cheated. Yeah, I know. But, but you mean... Well, it, we probably do do it like twice or... Did you have intercourse with weeks, another guy? I did, yeah, one, twice with one guy. And he's he keeps calling. He's call, called a few times. And I mean, I'm nice to him, but I don't really think I want to cheat again. I you just don't. want to know how... What how, was, how, how was the sex with the new guy? Well, it wasn't as good as it is with my boyfriend. We yeah. have really great sex, and no. even though the, oh, really? the guy has a bigger dick. <laughs> the guy cheated with. Yeah. It's nice. Your hey, boyfriend's listening right now. He's driving off a suspension bridge. Yeah. No. Yeah. No, he's not listening. Okay. But um, I just want to know. How like, do you know he's not? Do you know where he is? He's he's in the living room. I'm uh, in my room. Okay. Wow. <laughs> that's uh, that's uh. It's decent-sized huevos, you know? I mean, sometimes people just hear right through the heating vent and fact, stuff. It suggests she kind of wants to. Well, be. he was on the phone when I called, and and he's, he's on the cell phone all the time. Because the thing is that the reason that he doesn't really want to have sex, I think, is because he's stressed out a lot because of his job. He's yeah. trying to start this company. Yeah. And okay. All right. Well, let's just uh, let's backtrack here for a second. Okay. You've been with a guy three and a half years. Mm-hmm. You're having sex, had sex with another guy a couple times. Uh, if the sex had been better with the guy you were cheating with, you probably would have had sex with him again, or at least probably continue. It just sounds but, to me but, like maybe this relationship has run its course. Well, here's my concern, though. It, 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 this is an angry, anger F. This is an F you... Veg- vengeance F? Yes. This is, this is someone, she, rather than her saying, honey, listen... I understand you're starting your business. This isn't working for me right now, but we're gonna, you're going to have to get to the point where you're paying more attention to me. I'll bear down and try to handle this in the meantime. It's, how dare you abandon me? I'm not getting what I need. Screw you. I'm going to go be with someone else. Yeah. Very hostile behavior. No, I mean, I didn't think that I was going to do this. I just, I like to go out dancing with my friends, and one night we did go out, and I saw someone that I knew, and... And I ended up giving him my number. Even you know, I just thought we would just we would just talk. And oh, then one I see. night we got totally a, different was, than what I said. Totally different. Yeah, yeah look, I was in a fight with my boyfriend. Look, one night it's exactly what I'm saying. <laughs> you're in a fight with your boyfriend. I didn't so say you were in a fight. Guy. Yeah, I didn't say you were even in a fight with him. I said you're not being supportive of him. You don't. You're not empathic of what he's dealing no, with. No, I, I have been. It's been going on for like right. a year. Are you? Half, are you? Are quite well, down. This is dumb, are, are you a hot chick? Yeah, I am. I'm really hot, and guys like. Yeah. All right. Hold on a second. Drew, as usual, yeah. you're uh, wide of the mark here. No, no, it, it's the same thing. As a little each, but here's uh, here's my vibe. This is a hot chick, 
hot chicks, if they're a little bit stupid or a little bit insecure, which most of them are, need to have the hot uh, affirmation all the time. Yeah. And the good news is, for them, they can get it all the time. So a hot chick who's a young chick, and they basically slow down with this stuff in their later 20s and early 30s or maybe after they crank out a few kids. But the hot chick who's 23, who's with a guy who's a little bit wrapped up in starting a business, and they've been together for three years, so it's like he's not bringing her flowers and trying to pound her on the kitchen table every night. He comes home, he's wrapped up, he's stressed out. She's so insecure, she needs to know she's hot all the time. And this guy's only letting her know she's hot twice a week. Yeah. And by the way, it's like you got to have a guy wanting to f you in order to feel al- like like you're validated, like you're again, alive. That's that's a personality disorder. Really. All right, I'm with you, Wendy. Okay. Well, first of all, I'm not insecure, and I'm not stupid or anything. I'm I'm above average intelligence, and I. I mean, Everybody I, says I that. that. Okay. Everyone's a genius. Well, I just graduated, and I had really great, you know, evaluations from my teachers and everything. But anyways, graduated um, from. Uh, she. Where, where did you go to UCSB? No, I went to a different school up here. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> junior college, Santa Barbara no. City College. Yeah. No, I yes. I graduate. I have my BA, but I don't want to mention the school because. All right, really small. all right, all right. But listen, by by the way, some of the dumbest but, chicks okay. I know went to college. So, true too. He effed his way right through them. Okay, well, whatever. I am smart, but um, I, it's uh, not that my my boyfriend like doesn't like tell me that he wants to have sex it's that he does and then he gets me all worked up and then and then we don't have sex you know like he'll he'll like grab my boobs and <laughs> i don't know it's just it's, okay. it's very frustrating and uh, i stand corrected I, on the smart part i want to know like what can i do to, okay. to get him look to look look do, listen 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 to me he's you guys have been together for a while i mean over three years yeah, but I'm he, a very sexual person. I'm much more so than him. You just you're, you want to explore you're, her you're, past a little bit. So I, no, no, no. You're you're an insecure person. I'm not insecure. I just love to have sex, and I'm not getting it enough. And, and you're screaming this in the room that he's in. He's in the next room. Well, he, this happened tonight. I mean, we went out to dinner, and and I told him we need to go get some condoms, and he's like, no. He's like, I don't, I don't feel good. But he's what, been what? sick for like two weeks with a cold, and it's not. He I don't even. All right, feel listen. Sick. Quiet down. Why do you guys need condoms when you've been having? You've been together for three and a half years. Because I don't want to get pregnant. I was on the pill, and it made me gain weight, and I didn't. Uh, I, I couldn't very, lose it until I got very secure, the pill. She's very secure. Very secure. Okay, listen, I, Wendy. I, I gained 30 pounds. 30 pounds? And then pounds. when I got off the pill and I started exercising, I finally lost it. So. 30 pounds. Okay, listen. Yeah. Well, she, she wasn't exercising. Either. Listen, Wendy, break up. You've been together for too long. You're angry. You're cheating. He's not making you feel uh, like a queen. Break up. That's it. Hmm. I, I, he's he's he here. Let me explain something. How old is he? He's twenty-seven. Twenty-seven. When a guy's twenty-seven, it becomes extremely important to him that he get his career, his yep. business, his finances off the ground. Yep. The the days of pumping away willy nilly are uh, behind him. Yeah. I mean, you, you're still horny, but you're start. You're hearing the clock tick. You're getting near thirty, and you got nothing going on. Yep. You don't want to be renting your whole life. Guys get focused on this. Yeah. Uh, you're 23 and you're focused on guys desiring you. When he's got, I, I agree, maybe not a horrible person, but has some personality difficulties. Yes. Wants to just abuse a guy. And think about it. The guy's in the next room and she's screaming like, I don't care if he hears me. This is my she's point. Angry. Is she, she's acting out in ways that are extremely hurtful to him and has no sense of empathy or even concern for how this yes. how this affects her. She's a she's a hot looking sociopath. <laughs> Break up with him and do him a favor, please. Megan? Yeah. You're 18? Yes. What's up? Well, I just want to say I love your show. Thanks. And um I called about a year and a half ago and you guys told me to get the hell out of my house and I did a week ago to the hour. Wow. Well. And um it was a bad move. I uh, left in the middle of the night, and um, I packed up all the necessaries. And um, my parents still have not heard from me, have no idea where I'm at or anything. It was a bad move. Well, it was a good move. A bad but move, out. Bad circumstance. I see. I see. So you never understand it. No, I didn't understand that. But um, they, uh, I'm not really don't sure how to go white about. Trash. You don't know inflection. That's your problem. You're like, uh, you're like Jaime the Robot. 
All right, oh. so go ahead, Megan. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's your fault. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I, uh, I'm kind of confused as to when I should contact them and what I should do because they're pretty psychotic. All right, and, where are you living now? Um, I'm staying with a married couple of uh, fr uh, friends of mine, and um, she had gone through the same thing. What is it you've been going through? Uh, well, they're overly controlling, and um, they're just they're just weirdos. I mean, like, I've never been allowed to have a job, and um, I was homeschooled. And the homeschooling didn't go bad because I made sure I socialized and everything, but I had to lie a lot to in order to actually do normal things. How did you, how did you make sure you socialized a lot when they were so controlling? Well, um, like when I got a hold of my license and started driving and stuff, I um, I would visit with friends and stuff. Okay, so what they, are, what they were controlling. Are they religious? No, um, they're just they're just huge control freaks. They were like that with my brother and. Okay. When you say you did normal things, what does that does that mean? Pardon? What did that mean when you said you did normal things? Um, well, I was involved in 4-H, and I played piano, and I did ballet. And no, you said I did. I I was able to do normal things That's... when I socialized. What do you... Oh yeah, I just hang out with friends and. What are you getting at? I'm for? wondering whether normal things included doing drugs and having sex, and that may be what freaked the parents oh, out. Oh no, that's not. I mean, like, well, I will not deny that I have involved myself in those activities, but that's not really what I usually do. With will my not time. deny that I have involved myself in those activities. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. I'm. I live in I France. Love being English, man. All right. Well, wait a minute, Miss Conehead. <laughs> is is did, did your parents find out? Um, well, they did uh, find out a little bit about it, but the thing is, my dad's a pothead, and so Ooh. when he, they found a little bit of pot in my room, they totally flipped. Yeah, yeah it was pissed for, for Bogarten, right? Huh? You're holding. Bogarting is pot. No. I no, don't know. Okay. My English Bogarten doesn't English mean anything <laughs> anymore. All right, so listen, Megan. Yeah. Uh, I believe you that you're sane. Okay. And, and I cool. believe you that your parents are uh, head cases. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I'll take your word for it. Mm-hmm. I'm fine. No, really, so seriously. What? Okay, here's the deal. Your You're 18 years old. Yeah. You, you can be out of the house if you want to be out of the house. Right. Now, the question is, is what about you getting a job and getting your life going? Well, that is what I'm working on right now, and um, I want to, I have every intention of doing that. I have to uh, get a car and all that good stuff, but um, my you, friends are really helping what, me. What are you doing for money? Um, well, right now they won't accept rent or anything, so I do have a little bit of over $400 to my name, and I should have an extra $400, but my mom had a joint bank account with me, and I can't access the money. Your dad tried to smoke it. It's a joint account. <laughs> yeah. Joint, yes. <Yeah. laughs> That's funny. Okay, listen. Uh, call your parents so they don't call the cops. Well, they're no, they're, no, they're not going to do that because uh, they would get in trouble. I think they probably had a bong fund. Too. Right, because they, they got, what do they do? Because your dad, like, sells weed or something? Well, we got all the family secrets, but, like, if they ever got the police involved, it'd be pretty bad. Like what? Oh, oh, you got molested. Oh, no, no, no. What are the family secrets? What happened? What do you do? Um, I'm really not comfortable talking about it. Just well, your dad, your dad deals. Um, yes. Possibly. Yeah, yeah, I just okay. said your dad's selling weed. I said he grows. Or, yeah, he dad grows. grows. No, he grows. Yeah, yeah he's got a. He he's a pothead. Yeah, well, there's, only, there's two he, possibilities. He smokes. He smokes his own harvest. He's yeah. got a hydroponic <laughs> farm. Yeah. In the basement. Either he's growing pot or he's keeping like uh, uh, somebody held prisoner in your basement. So go, go ahead with the pot. That, that's fine. Yeah. Okay, you know they don't pay for cable and all that good stuff too. Yeah. All right. Uh -huh. they're, they're dynamite people. Oh yeah. Okay. So look. Call them, tell them uh, I'm out of the house, I'm fine, I'm safe. I'll check in with you uh, in another week and hang up. All right? You think I should call soon or do you Yes, call soon. Yeah, I think you owe them that. Call soon, tell them you're safe, tell them you're fine, tell them not to worry, and tell them you'll call them later. And get and a that's job. It. And get a job and fight to keep it and move out and I mean, out of your friend's house and all that. Eventually, something's where I, I don't trust these friends too much. Mm -mm. The guy's going to try to have sex with her. Oh, yes. See Tonight. She doesn't sound very good looking, though. Megan? Yeah. Are you are you attractive? Um, yeah. You are? Yes. All right. Yeah? Don't, seriously, don't worry about my friends. They're good people. Um, and uh, my friend, the girl, she was in a very similar family situation, yeah. and that's why they took me in. Uh, how about, uh, do they drink? Uh, she doesn't. She's diabetic, but um, he does every now and then. Yeah, be, be careful. Be prepared to see a silhouette, silhouette of him and a 
bud tall boy yeah just in the doorway tonight yes just uh you'll see his boner Megan, off to his Megan. right you see the can in his left hand megan this is no bs you, you got to be careful where you oh, sleep I, I understand that could happen but uh, I, don't, you, I wouldn't allow it to anyway uh, that's a good girl all right you take a corn cob off, you break it off in your coos before you go to bed, all right? <laughs> okay. All right. Not just your coos. Oh, yeah. Hey, Megan? Yes. Uh, I'm going to need you to use the other half of the corn cob uh, in the uh, corn hole. Uh, okay? Oh. Drew pointed that out. not really down with that. Yeah, but he may be. Yeah, I'm, you're I'm, right. I'm looking at I, Okay. I'm, I'm very... Here, here's my thing. I'm very conservative that way. I drive my plate safe. And she <laughs> I drive. I drive at 55. And she sleeps with a Super Bowl in her mouth. I always keep the deadbolt locked on the front door. I keep the hands at 10 and 2, and I sleep with a corn cob up my ass. <laughs> I'm like those guys in those commercials, those uh, State Farm commercials. You learned you know that during I mean? your. You learned that very the, safe drive. One of your re safe. relaxation techniques too. You learned at your massage last weekend. Yeah. Keep the keister. Keep the keister. Yeah. Ah, oh, true. What? I, tell, I, get, I get angry when I think about these commercials. You know, there's there's this, uh, <clears throat> all these uh, auto insurance commercials that talk about rewarding the safe driver. The safe driver. Take it easy. Everybody, slow down. It's not a race. Don't want to risk anything. If two drivers left one vicinity driving. One drove like a maniac, and the other drove 12 yeah. miles an hour. Mm -hmm. They'd arrive at the same time. In New York City. Here, here's the story I want every every teacher to tell his driving student, and you'll hear it from me right now. If Johnny left Van Nuys to go to uh, LAX at noon, and Billy left LAX, left Van Nuys to go to LAX at noon, and Johnny obeyed all posted traffic uh, speed limits and 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 used a, used a safe and cautious driving. And Billy drove like a possessed bat out of hell. Billy would make his goddamn flight, and Johnny wouldn't. That's the story I want everyone to tell. Not that they both arrive at the same time. Oh, no. Contraire. One guy's going 85 and ignoring ignoring all posted uh, placards and signs and everything, and one guy's driving like a pussy. How Believe me, about? I've done this a thousand times. You get places a ton faster when you haul ass. I suggest everyone do that. Would like to get this town moving. Oh, Drew, we got the mayor. We got a. I mean, uh, mayor I Han? mean, not not Mayor Han. I'm talking about uh, Gray Davis, the governor. Oh, the governor. Yeah, they're gonna kick that pussy out. I think. Mm. He just smells of me of just pure pussy. I don't even know what that guy is. He doesn't even seem like a human being. And and. Uh, Everyone's going to take his place. It seems like, but just more bureaucratic uh, white trash. Oh, really? I, I want I want someone to get in there, and start kicking some ass. Let's we'll start moving a little bit. I'd like to run on the shake your ass platform. Let's put you in there. It's a Corolla for governor. Corolla for governor. Get people to move a little bit. Yeah, the shake your get ass the, platform. Get the town moving. You'll start slashing bureaucracy. I'll start firing everybody. Get your own. You'll 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 provide individual police forces. People pay enough taxes to get their own policemen? Yep. Own garbage men, own policemen. Once you get into the Platinum Club, you pay over five hundred grand a year in taxes, you get your own garbage man. Yeah. Oh, Drew, I got a ton of things to work out. All right, we're late. We got to take a break. We'll be back. Yeah. Love line. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Just talking about the uh, governor of California, Gray Davis, uh, getting recalled. I don't even know how that works. I just know. Listen, I was just looking at USA Today a week ago. Uh, out of 50 states on bang for your buck. Oh, yeah. In terms of uh, amount of tax dollars you pay in and what you get out of it. California? Last. Number 50. Yeah. Number 50. Mm. Well, gee, why is the... Uh Governor being recalled, what do you think? Yeah. Any relationship there? Nah, couldn't no be. No way. No way. Couldn't be. That big puss is up there talking about, uh, I always love when they generalize, too. He's like, well, you know, times have been tough. Times are tough all over the country. They always try to spread it out, spread their little F up, spread it out into the neighboring. Yeah. 
Right. Number 50, you idiot. And businesses are just fl fleeing this kind of, this state. Of course. It's conserve. These uh, liberal retards wanting to clean everything up and do everything for everybody and pay everybody. You can't you, you can't work in this. All the work. You know what it's like trying to have a business and a workman's comp and all this kind of stuff. You can't you can't afford. Everyone wants to know. Well, why 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 is why are these all these illegals coming in? Why is everyone getting paid under the table? Can't afford it. I've been trying to deal with it myself. You just you can't do it. The amount of insurance and stuff you got to deal with with everybody. Mm -hmm. you, can, you can't afford it. No, yeah, yeah, it doesn't doesn't pencil. No, look. Here's the deal, and then we're going to calls. But here's, here's uh, I'll, I'll tell you how uh, economics work, and I don't even know how economics work, but here's how it works. How life works. We used to shoot tons and tons of movies in Los Angeles, and then what happened? All the bureaucrats, all the unions, all the union leaders, everyone gets involved. Next thing you know, you got a bunch of Teamsters getting 30 bucks an hour sitting around smoking all day long. If you've ever been on a movie set out here, You'll see nothing but a bunch of guys getting paid a ton of money who don't do anything. Well, they do. They eat. They eat. Okay. If you don't count eating, they don't do anything. And oh, actually, you can, uh, complaining, <laughs> complaining and eating. If you don't if you don't count those two things, they don't do anything. Once in a while, they do something, and then they go back to doing nothing, and they get angry if someone does their job for them. So they have way too many people getting paid way too much doing nothing. So it's great. It's the greatest thing in the world. You're getting meal penalties, you're getting golden time, you're getting time, you're getting double time, and all you're doing is sitting around and eating. Well, that's fine. But eventually, someone runs out of money. And they go, well, listen, it's too expensive. We can't feed all these people. I've been sitting around doing nothing. We, we got 200 people on a set that needs about 50 people. Everyone's getting golden time. We can't do it. Ah, we'll go to Canada. We'll make it cheap. We'll make it easy. And if it gets expensive in Canada? We'll go to we'll, we'll go overseas, Yugoslavia, whatever, whatever it is. Yeah. We'll go to Canada. We'll do yeah. thing. So fine, they go to Canada. Now all you guys who were in the union making all those big bucks, having a great job, no jobs. great. Now you got zero. Fantastic. Screw you, Nora. Yeah. Yeah, that's what happens with all the business in California. They just got to go somewhere else. Go ahead, then Nora. You're, then you're you're um, now everyone's out of work. Your beloved real estate's going to start collapsing. That's right. Everyone takes off. Nora? Yes, I actually have two questions. My mm -hmm. first question is, um, I've been with my boyfriend now for about six months, and um, I was sexually active maybe two times before I was with him, and now I'm with him. And um, I have not been able to have an orgasm, and sometimes it's even to the point where I don't get wet at all. Are I you... used to have sex, like, quite often, and now he gets really discouraged because of it, and we don't have sex, like, maybe once, once a week. Is it just with him? Is it just with him you've had this trouble? Having no, orgasm? Like, I've never had an orgasm, and like I was wondering if like if that's normal, if there's something I can do to to help this or what? Because it's I mean 18. it's really straining on our, our relationship right I, now. What's the part where you used to really get wet? No, so I I um have been having problems getting wet. Oh boy! Anything we should know about your past? Um, there was um, I was um, a rape victim in the past, maybe a year ago now. How old were you? Yeah, and oh, I don't 17. know if that has something to do with it. I never got any. Um, uh, I never who who who, who raped you? Um, it was a friend. Well, a guy that I knew. I wouldn't really consider him a friend, but. And then, what happened to you growing up that made you such a good victim? I'm sorry. Anything bad happened to you growing up? Um, I have a really horrible relationship with my mom. Yeah. She beat me as a child. Well, so. There you go. That's what I'm talking about. All right. So. You've got physical abuse and then rape, probably some post-traumatic stress reaction from that. You've got to deal with these things. It's, it's going to be extremely difficult for you to be intimate and sexual with that kind of uh, sort of biology and, and trauma stacked against you. And, you know, you're not, you're not going to have, you're not going to feel intimate. You're not going to have sexual arousal. You, you've got to deal with this. So should I go to a therapist? Yeah. yeah. yeah Can absolutely. you do that? Absolutely. Yeah. Where you're calling from Vegas? Yeah. It was about 180 degrees over there? Yeah. That may be why she's not getting wet. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Nothing Nothing can get, uh, clam can't get wet there. Yeah. It's, it's, it's too dry. You got to get out of Vegas. <laughs> what are you doing in Vegas? Not right now. My, my dad lives out here, so. I did. Oh, I'll tell you, I want to, I, it, Here's the thing about Vegas. Anytime I get off the strip, I want to kill myself. 
Oh yeah, when you go down those long, you start, long you start, roads that are named after hotels. Yeah, you start. You, you get off. You get. You get two seconds off the strip. You're yeah. gonna kill yourself. Well, no, it depends on which direction you go. Some of it's kind of nice. No, Vegas is like Vegas is like the circus. As long as <laughs> as long as you're like under under the big top yeah. and you're sitting right in there, everything's great. As soon as you go behind, some guy's beating the crap out of an elephant. <laughs> Bearded woman's uh, smacking a, a midget. The strong man is sodomizing someone. There's some drunken clown who's molesting a kid. You know, it's, it's a disaster. You got to you got to just stay in the big top itself. That's what the strip is to Vegas. Don't get off that. Oh man, does it get ugly quick? You see some of those apartment complexes. Nothing but dirt and rocks everywhere. 120 degrees. Ooh, it's a great. I I. Uh, if and when I kill myself, I'm going to Vegas to do it. Oh, yeah. Because uh, that's how you know there's no turning back. Yeah. You just get off that strip, you kill yourself. Corey? Hello? You're 19? Yes, I am. What's up? Um, okay, well, I I work full-time, and then I also go to school at night. Mm-hmm. And um, I just started working at an exotic club. Mm-hmm. And I know it's, like, a bad thing because I wasn't really raised to be to doing that and stuff. Mm-hmm. But, um I make as much money there mm-hmm. as I do working my regular job. Now, yeah. I've been working Should, there for a couple months. Shouldn't you make more yeah. doing the stripper than uh, it's a regular job? Yeah. Yeah, okay. And I make like $15 an hour. As, a, as a regular, regular job. Huh? It, that's your regular job. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um. Well, let me ask you questions. Sure. Topless or topless and bottomless? Um, it's, well, you can go on stage, but I choose not to go on stage. What so does that mean? I just give dances in the back, and it it's, it 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 ranges. You can get like full nude, you can get topless. What what are you doing? Um, it depends on what they want to pay, I guess. All right, hold on a second. Really, it the bars bars are either topless or topless and bottomless. There's not like uh, just play it by ear. If you want to go up on stage and just wear like a rain poncho, you can do that too. Just street clothes. The hell is she talking about? What line was she on, Drew? Uh, three. three. Corey. Yes. When so, the women the women go up on stage. Yes, they have to be nude. But they get they get totally naked. Oh, yeah. the men, the guys are watching, don't have to be nude. <laughs> no. <laughs> the women. Drew made it funny. Yeah. Drew. Uh, so so the ones who go up on stage get totally naked. Yes. Now if okay, say some old nasty guy wants to dance. <laughs> I don't have to get nude. I'm not going to get nude. Yeah, you I mean when him. when you give him a lap dance? Yeah. Well, aren't only the, the lifeguard. Aren't the lap dances? Uh, don't they have to keep their thong bags or g-strings on or something anyway? Well, it no because I'm not sure how they do that because I know that there's permits for it, but they allow <laughs> yeah, you to no. get fully nude in the back. All right. Okay. So you well, get you get fully nude. You give a lap dance. Yeah. You, you ever get aroused? No. I, I've never even had an orgasm during sex, just like the girl before me. Okay. Well, you never once in a while though. You get any cute guys back there? Yeah, actually, it, it doesn't turn me on or anything. But I mean, it's just like. Why wouldn't it? I don't know. It, it's trauma. Not, I. You know what? Outside of working there, I have a total. I'm totally against it. <laughs> I, it's so yeah. funny just because... I feel the same way with murder. <laughs> when I'm not actually taking human life, You're I'm totally fundamentally against it. Against yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Especially Literally. people killing me. That I take a stand on. Right. Right. Well, so you're saying uh, when you're not totally nude in the, in the backside <laughs> of the club, grinding on some fat Arab guy, you're against it. <laughs> yes, actually. Okay. I'm very... Um, very conservative. Yeah, well, mm-hmm. I'm very... What's the word? You believe in a woman's right to dance? Screwed no. up. Okay. Very, very screwed up. So okay, so what happened? What's going on with you? Well, the thing is, is that um, I want to go to school full time, and I think the only way that I can do that is if I kind of make the stripping my full time work, and I'm kind of interested in just because it's you, you fun. Wanna, you want to do? It's fun. You just want to do the stripping part. Yeah, and, and kind of quit my job. How how often are you stripping? Well, right now, maybe once a week if I can, because it's. it's Till late and early in the morning, and then I have to go to work. Could you pick up more stripping work if you wanted to? Yeah, it's come and go as you please. Oh I, I, I swear to God, I tell this to Drew, he doesn't believe me. What's that? Every stripper I've ever talked to, it's like, when, 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 when's your shift in? When do you come here? What are your hours? What, what's your schedule? They're like, whenever, whatever. Yeah. Wow. So leave whenever they want. Yeah. Well, some of them, you have to be there at like 
six, and then you leave it to. And by the way, this is how you know, gents, if a uh, if a stripper likes you. I'm telling you. You go, uh, when's your shift in? And they go, I can leave whenever I want. Yeah. That means she, that, that means that you means can go have sex you. with her. Yes, it means she wants a party. If she goes, my boyfriend picks me up at 4 a.m. Yeah. Okay, that's no good. But if they give that, I can go whenever I want. You're done. You're in. You're in. Yeah. Am I right? You're right. Because you have guys say that, like, when you get off, right? Oh, my God. You have no idea. All right, let's do let's do a recreation. Okay. <laughs> let's do first the guy you're not we're, into. We're, we're going to get the creeps. I'll, I'll, be, I'll be the creepy guy you're not into, all okay. right? All right. Hey, what's your name? Uh, Corey, what's yours? Corey. My name is Hachachal. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, really? Where are you from? I'm uh, from uh, La Pachal. Yeah, uh, then usually those guys want to ask how much for sex, and then uh, I slap them, and then I walk away. When, when, when you get off work, when, when's your shift in? You know, it, it's... It's kind of hard to tell. Usually, I stay here till around four. It, it, it all depends on what my manager says. All right, now I'm a hot dude. Oh. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Hey, what's your name? Corey. What's yours? Kurt. Kurt. <laughs> yeah. Oh, what are you doing here? <laughs> Just checking it out. When do you when's your shift end? Uh, whenever you want it to. What are you doing later? All right, oh, bitch. Don't Corey. don't go too obvious. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Yeah, but that's how it works, right? You get off when you want to get off. Yeah, but I usually I tend not to. You don't go out. home with any guys? I've never done that before. Yeah, but you have a boyfriend? No, actually, I just broke up. Well, I broke up with him like a little while ago. Mm -hmm. And what do you want to study at school? Business and marketing. Yeah, all righty. Uh -huh. All right, right now you're uh, marketing your vagina. So, or, you know, the, that's the not trauma? the first time I've heard that. All right, that were, were you traumatized? Anybody do anything weird to you? No, not at all. I no no sexual abuse, no physical. Oh, what? I was raised by my grandparents. Yeah, that's what? trauma. Yeah. Where's what, your parents? What your parents? Uh, well, my parents split up when I was like six months old. And what so, happened to them? Well, my dad lives in Orange County, which is right by me. And then why uh, were you raised by your grandparents? Uh, because when my parents split up, my mom kicked my dad out, and my dad went to my grandparents' house with me and my brother, and so we were raised by like my. And what? How old were you when you went to the grandparents? Six months. And yeah, so did you no, not? I mean, I've lived with them my whole life. Did you, you never, you never got raised by your mom. No. What never. happened to her? What happened? She's evil. No, she lived in um, up north. What uh, happened to her? She uh, that's a mess. Uh, that that's bad, Corey. That that, yeah, that affects you. There you go. That's what did it. No mama. Well, I mean, I got used to it. My brother kind of took it kind of hard because my grandma was kind of like my mom. Yeah, but Corey, getting used to it is is, is is good, but it has some residual effect, and we're seeing the manifestations all right, of that. Now. All right. So listen, Corey. Yeah. Having your having your mother abandon you and never having any contact with her is a pretty heavy thing for a kid. Yeah. You think so? Oh yes, that's a matter of fact. That's not we think so. That's a matter of fact. Now, fortunately, you had some good people that reared you and things, and you didn't fly off the the, the track too far. But it, it, the residual effects are manifesting. Yeah, we, we still see them. That you don't have good boundaries. You All don't right. perceive things, the behaviors that might have adverse impact on you. All it, right. Listen, I love strippers, but she sounds like she's about ready to turn the corner here, and I probably don't think it's a good idea for her. Yes? All right. All right. We'll take a, uh, take a break. We'll be right back. Hey, yo. Love line. This I'm is Adam. our... Sorry. This is Dr. Drew. What? Our last uh, broadcast from the Westwood One... Hell Studio. Yes. Amazingly. Yes. And all these years of yelling, and Adam has finally gotten his wish. We're changing studios tonight. I haven't gotten my wish. I went out and made everyone move by That's threatening true. them. That's true. Please do not uh, undermine my achievement by saying, gotten my wish. Well, you... Here's what happened. Let me explain how this place works. Everybody here is impotent. Producer Ann, impotent. Dr. Drew, impotent. Lauren, junior, 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 impotent. Everyone here is impotent. No one is capable of getting anything done. I've been begging. I would say something different if it was true, but it's just not. Yeah. I begged producer Ann to move for the last mm, year. I said they were going to make this theater right next to us and build it in our parking lot. We're going to be stepping over garbage and trash and mud and rebar for nine months and sure as 
goddamn hell they did and we did nothing. Drew, the most impotent of them all. He sits there and does nothing. I screamed about moving a thousand times to a thousand people. Nothing ever happened. Nothing ever happened. I kept saying to producer Ann, we got to move. Nothing. Be fair, you also yelled on the radio about how crappy the studio was. That's a thousand million times. I talked to my agent a thousand million times. I talked to Drew to talk to his agent a thousand million times. Talked to everyone a kabillion thousand zillion times. Zillion, billion, kajillion times. (laughs) I talked to everybody about moving out of this armpit known as Westwood One. And sure enough, a year later, the theater had been built completely around us with no place to park and no security. And uh, here's what happened. I did what I always do, which is the way we got a security guard here many years ago, is I said, here's the date in which I will stop coming in. Three weeks ago, I said, this Sunday, I will not come in. Because your safety was threatened, too. You had a reaction. Some jack off in the parking lot was yelling at me, but... It was just a good excuse to get the F out of this dump. And I said, here's the deal. Three weeks will not come in. And what happened? What happened, Drew? It happened. No, I'll tell you what happened. Engineer Anderson came in here a week ago, and he said, Uh. Hey, buddy, I'm going on vacation on that, and it's really going to be tough if you move during that thing. And Drew went, Oh, oh, what can we do to accommodate you? And Anderson said, Well, I'm not going to be back for like another three weeks after the deadline, so if we could move it back. And I said, Sorry. Tough ass, we're moving. And he's like, You're screwing me, dude. If you move without me, I'm. And I said, And then, Ander- what did you say, Drew? I said, Maybe we can. Well, we can, well, we can put it off. Let's delay it. Let's delay it. Let's do. You're being tough on air. So I said, Anderson, nothing personal. I'm not coming in after this. We don't have to move. I'm not coming in. And then what happened? Then they came up to me and they said, Uh, you know, you might be doing your show from your house because we're not going to be able to accommodate. And I said, so, so, yeah. so be it. I'll do the show with a boner, <laughs> laughing like a hyena in my den. Well, because we're not going to be able to... Well, who cares? I'm not, com- I'm not coming in after this date. Well, guess what? It's the date's date. coming Sunday, and guess who's moving? Thank you. And do you think we ever would have moved? No. Nope. Never! And we know why? Because we're pussies and we're... Everybody's impotent. impotent. Nobody can do anything. Not, not K-Rock, not producer Ann, not Drew, not anybody. Nobody can do anything. And I would love someone to surprise me. I would love someone to do something and, and amaze me, but it can't be done. I blow hard about moving for a year, maybe two. Zero happens and zero ever will because everyone at K-Rock is impotent. Everyone at Westwood One is impotent. And everyone associated with Love Line is impotent. That's it. That's the truth. I, people are going to be mad. Producer Ann's going to be upset. Drew doesn't like it. Lauren doesn't like it. That is the God's honest truth. We're moving because I had to be a prick and refused to come in. Fantastic. I don't care. I appreciate it. Drew appreciates it. Drew, would you just start being a prick with me? I'm going to try. We'll get something done around here. I'm going to try. <laughs> K-Rock, please. Nothing. They would do nothing ever, ever. Ever, Drew. You understand? You know why we have a security guard? Why do we have a security guard you here, Drew? To come in. How many months did I beg to get us a security guard? Many months. It's dangerous. Some guest is going to get hassled or shot or stabbed in the parking lot. We're going to have a lawsuit. What happened? Nothing. Nothing. For six months. And then I said, I'm not coming in after this date. And guess what? On that date, oh, security guard. Why, Drew? Because everyone else is a pussy and you switch. And they're what? Impotent. That's right. Okay. That's how it works. It's, it's, uh, uh, everyone should hold their head up with great pride, though, around here. Great pride. Mike. Yeah. Mike, you need anything? I can threaten not to come in so you can get it. Me? Yeah. Brian, what do we need? You need a new computer or soda machine, whatever it is, I'll just threaten not to come in. Do you have a question, Mike? I, I you want some computer. mixed nuts? You need a can of mixed nuts? I'll threaten not to come in. Mike needs a computer. Yeah, cashews and a computer. That's M- all I Mike, want. did you have a cashews? question? Cashews? Okay. Mike, question. Oh, Lauren, any supplies, have... papers, steno pads, things yeah, of that nature, mechanical pencils, post-its? 
Mike, we got to go. I'll threaten not to come in. We'll get him. 60 seconds, Mike. Go. Okay. Um, I've been married for two months. Um, we have sex every day, sometimes two, three times a day, and she doesn't seem to have an orgasm at all. I'll threaten not to come in. She'll get an orgasm. Are, are you having sex too often? Um, For her? Can you? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, she has one like maybe once a week, maybe. Maybe that's her more normal rhythm. Maybe that's all she sort of... Oral sex? Yeah, we do that. Is it, that how she has her orgasm? No, I haven't got that far yet. How is it she's able to have an orgasm? Um, the vibrator and, you know, just play vibrator. the little... Vibrator. She's, she uses the vibrator uh, with... I, are I you there? Yeah, I use it on her. Oh, you use it on her? Quaint. Yeah. That's nice. Yeah, old-fashioned. Yeah, it's like, it's like uh, when uh, when chimps first u learn to use tools. <laughs> you know, to cr using a rock to crack about open the, a the nut. So I was thinking the 2001 throws the tool up into the sky. It could be the vibrator spinning around there. All right. All right, Mike, listen. That's how uh, she that's, has that's, it. That's her. That's fine. The fact that she's able to even do it once a week is good. Uh, is she complaining? Um. Yeah. What's, what, what's she complaining about? She doesn't, I mean, she wants to have one, you know, and as soon as we're done having sex, she's horny again. Mm. And okay, bogus. She wants to keep yeah, going, yeah. and I'm tired. I'm done, you know? Yeah. yeah. We don't believe it. Now, does O... All right. See, that's what they... Bogus calls is... Uh, reloading. They just reload, yeah. reload, reload. Yeah. If, if they can keep asking questions, they can keep us on the line. Yeah, yeah. See, Drew, why do you ever in interrupt one of my pompous rants for this kind of nonsense? You're right. We should have just an entire show dedicated to that. Yes. We'll call it Loveline. Yes. Okay. Hey, everybody. Well, that's the week. I want to thank uh, Junior, 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 producer Lauren, the second, for doing a uh, great job uh, all week long. I want to thank uh, Brian. I like to call him Bri Bri for doing a great job on the phones, the coffee, and uh, the ass kissing all <laughs> week long. Uh, I want to thank uh, Tara. Don't call me Tara for not showing up this week. Ann. And I want oh, to thank uh, I want to thank producer Ann for doing a great job doing booking some good guests and uh, being Anderson solid all week on. I want to thank uh, producer. No, I actually I like Anderson. He's fine. Uh, he can show up. But I do want to thank uh, Ken who did a uh, yeoman like job filling in for uh, Anderson. And believe me, that uh, fairy's got some pretty big sandals to fill, and uh, Ken filled them just fine. And I want to thank myself. For showing a little initiative and some uh, huevos and getting our asses out of this dump known as Westwood One. I hope it burns the second the door closes behind me. So until next time, this is Adam Crawl for Dr. Drew saying mahalo. This has been Loveline. The opinions expressed on this show are not necessarily those of the staff, management, sponsors, or this station. The producer for Loveline is Anne Engold. Loveline is a presentation of Westwood One Entertainment.